to accept the minutes of March 26. So moved. Uh, second that. Any mm, corrections? A couple, okay. Just a couple minor ones, but uh, uh, and I'll, I'll just give this to you. Okay. But on page three, uh, like the fifth, fifth line up from the bottom, That's right. <clears throat> uh, says the surface will be pavement. Uh, it says imper impervious surface has been tried. I think we need to say pervious, right? Correct. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And there's probably even a more common, it's probably neither of those terms are, are quite accurate, but it's close enough for our, our purposes. Yeah. I, am, I think it delineates the difference. Mm. Um, also, it's an 82 space lot. Right. Four space lot. Right, and in fact, he probably said eighty-four. I think that's several right. people have because that's yeah, the that's, that's the number on the yeah. DRB permit, yeah. and and as part of the, that that discussion, it was actually it was even a, they thought two more might be lost on it for the returning radius of the bus. Oh. For the, the you know that. Right. And then the only other thing is on page five on the other business, and I maybe I'm just reading it wrong. Um, where it says three properties in the village have been appealed to. Is, is that how it should be worded? Or it should be three properties in the village have appealed to. Or maybe no, that's just three property no. that it maybe should be the. I don't know, understand. Was something I was wondering if it was like. Have been the tax or the, the, the it's probably the assessments have been appealed three the assessments of three properties in the village have been appealed to the state yeah, yeah that sounds I think probably because it's all one owner it was kind of just oh I see okay yeah okay, okay. maybe I don't know I don't know what was actually said but mm. okay and then the, a couple little tiny grammatical things. I'll just give this to. Okay. It's take Laura to task after the meeting. <laughs> okay, it has been uh, moved and seconded to accept the minutes with a, a few corrections and clarifications of March 26th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we've got some. I guess uh, we're ex anticipating some folks. Um, from the rescue board at about 6.15. So I think we can probably chew our way pretty quick through these items that are here. You've got some liquor licenses for us yep. in continuation of the um, list last week. Putney General Store, Putney Village Pizza, and then the Katie's, is that the name of the place over there? Katie's? I think so. Yeah. I'm going to say that yes. it's a little yeah. bit so those are the three. Is there anything special that has to be done with Katie's other than what we always no, do? No, no. Okay. Because that's a new one. Some anything outstanding on any of these? Is Neil all caught up? Um, no. no. <laughs> but that, as we talked about last year, that's not his. Yeah. Um, he, the last time we worked with him, though, he worked, yeah. he worked pretty hard yeah. to, yeah. He was pretty receptive. He gave us a bunch of checks. Uh, make a motion that we approve the liquor licenses for Putney Pizza, the general store, and Katie's as submitted. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion or questions? If not, I will call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want me to take and them right now? Yep. Why don't we do this? The, 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 yep. Because that, that's really going to take us about a moment. Uh, there's a, you saw in the packet, there's a letter from Tom concerning naming the driveway to the fire station because there will now be three different Here. entities. Here. Oh. Uh, I'll just 
simply read it out loud. With the construction of the new Vermont Park, State Park and Ride, a new 911 physical address for the site is required. With this new address, the lot will then have provide access to three separate and specific 911 addresses, fire station, park and ride, and the municipal wastewater pump station, which then brings forth the requirement to provide an official 911 road name. I would like you to approve and assign the lot with the following official road name, Carl Snyder Drive. This road name is in memory of Putney Fire Chief uh, Carl Snyder, who was killed in the line of duty while operating at a residential dwelling fire on Christian Square during the afternoon of March 18th, 1964. As such, and given that the fire station is the primary address located at the existing lot, I feel it would be fitting for this request to be approved. Your consideration and assumed approval of this request is appreciated. I'll accept a motion to... So moved. Second. Any discussion or changes? Carl Snyder drive work for everybody? That's, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, call the question and all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Can get that to Laura so she has that. Okay. Done. Okay. Okay. Scott, what you got? What you got? Ruby, you guys ready? You yeah. want to do that? Let's. Uh, this is not on the um, agenda, but it's. I'm going to let you explain what this is concerning, or Anita, if you would like to explain what this is concerning, just for the well, public. I mean, we can give you the background of, of what, where this is maybe Anita can come in when. The point is when Tom came to, to ask for this, but essentially we've had um, a number of appeals related to Greg Wilson's properties and properties owned by his um, companies. And, um, and so there are a few that are in the pipeline. There are three right now waiting for the state hearing officer. And those three um, are what Tom is coming to the town in the hopes of settling before it goes to the state um, appraiser, or the state hearing officer, they're called now. What this is, is this is the stuff from the, um, oh, sorry, guys, this is from the appeals book. And if you go to the last page in this little pile of stuff I gave you, you'll see, I, I think I just highlighted or marked. These are the questions. And the little thing on the cover page is what it says in the appeals book. But the issue essentially is that in all of the dealings we've had, um, we probably have three or four that have gone through the Lister appeal process, gone to the BCA, and then gone to the, uh, the state appraiser. Um, and a few of those, we have been approached by Tom Costello asking if we could consider settlement. And we've consistently, you know, not, we, we are, we are, Unified in, in the Lister board, including Tim Severance, who couldn't be here, about our opinion about that. We've also consulted at steps along the road, the town, the League of Cities and Towns, mm -hmm. and various other people, and also, you know, within the town hall, kind of what people thought, and to the select board, we've raised it to before. Um, our opinion is that we feel that it's very, particularly with, with these properties, and this particular town owner, landowner in the town, um, we know that this will come up again. And we know that we expect, we very much expect, especially after the reappraisal, to have more appeals come through. And we very much don't want to set a precedent, particularly for this landowner, parcel owner, but also generally, we, um, unless we see a reason to, to settle or if there's something, if there was an error on our part or some way in which we felt like we'd get really, <laughs> You know, it'd be hard for the town to bite the bullet and take whatever the grand list, you know, the bottom line of the grand list was. Then there'd be reason to, to settle. We don't think that's the case here. And we'd be very reluctant to, um, it would have to be, from the lister's perspective, it would have to be a pretty considerable monetary value that would affect the grand list in order for us to say, yeah, let's settle. Um, but ultimately, 
you know, a, any kind of settlement that would happen would be between you, the select board, and Tom Costello on behalf of, of Greg Wilson or any of the other parcel owners that he's bringing. Um, but our, our recommendation from the Lister's board is really um, not to settle and not to even engage because, you know, from our perspective, many of the, you know, we appreciate the process of going through the Lister appeal, the BCA, and the state appraiser. And historically, with this particular parcel owner and this particular lawyer, we don't win <laughs> from the state appraiser's perspective. Um, that won't always be the case, but that's the pattern. And we know that going in, but we'd rather stick with the, the, the protocol that's, that's been set up and is tried and true than um, kind of do settlements, which, you know, they're, they, they're legitimate settlements, but there's a lot of, you know, there's no control over it and there's no objective party outside of the town. And so that's why we appreciate the process. Yeah, it basically takes two people on, on either side of a case and it takes out anybody else. It's just two people sitting down deciding when really the hearing officer, like that's kind of his job. If they've exhausted all possibilities with the town, that's, that's the next step, that's the job. So our recommendation would be to stay protocol and continue instead of setting a precedent that there's, that there's another way to handle the appeal. If the appeal was, I mean, if there was something really wrong you know, blatantly wrong. On, on the part of town. Right. There would be a reason to settle, but there isn't. I mean, there isn't anything new. There is no new evidence to bring up, you know, and... We can walk through, if you want, the, the three parcels that he's asking. Right, but they do. But even, even aside from the three parcels, there's the idea that if we set a precedent, that could, that could be more detrimental to the town than beneficial. So... I mean, if you want to meet with him, um, it would be a good idea to have one of the listers there. It's ultimately up to you, whatever you want to decide. Our recommendation, both Tim Severance, Ruby, and myself, is to let the process follow through as it's set up and not alter it. And if, if we do do that and it goes to... No, I'm right, most likely. Will, be assigned. will you guys will defend your position? Oh, absolutely. In that hearing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And then, if if we needed counsel at that point, we would have the town council come and, and sit with yeah. us. But it hasn't been it hasn't warranted it from a monetary perspective. It's probably mostly year. just yeah. presentation of data. I would absolutely assume. it is, yeah. and that that we're very rock solid on. We did it with the grievance and then we did it with the BCA. Right. And each time there has been no, nothing right. new, no, no change, so. The, when it gets to the level of the state appraiser, it really hinges on the issue of, that we do mass appraisals and, um, uh, and we rely on a modified cost approach to do them. And the fair market value issue is always the thing that stymies us. It stymies every small town in the state. So, you know, that's really the primary reason why it's, you know, the verdict has always been in the appellant's case but, with the state appraiser. But, but all, of that has already, that. Yeah. all of that has already happened. So yeah. having the state appraiser do his job is really the next step. And we just, I, I, I think you were present for part of that BCA appeal and then had to leave or something, yeah. is that correct? Yeah. And you were present, Scott, yeah. or not? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that was a thorough right. process. And just oh, let me yeah. ask a couple of brief questions. How, uh, this is obviously is something that does not happen very often. Do we have any kind of historic precedents here You're recently for, for these kind of, you know, right, somebody coming to us no, as a privately fact, like this? No, most towns don't do settlements because, because it kind of undermines the no, litigation right. process. It's, it's, mm -hmm. And in our in our tenure in the Lister's office, which is from 2007, you started 2008. I, I, no, uh, well, I don't know around then. It's like but five or six years. We haven't. Well, there's been no settlement during that time that we know of that okay. we are yeah, aware of. Yeah. yeah. And the only person that's approached us ever for settlement is. And this isn't later. something that happens a couple of times a year. Or something. No. No. This it's is pretty rare. Fairly rare. Yeah. Um, Anita. Brian. 
like to hear what you've got to say about this. You I brought this forth. Yep. Corresponding with Tom Costello, and I talked to him right. He said there is no problem with meeting with him before the hearing. I have no idea what Tom Costello wants to present. So you know, I don't. Right. I don't know how, you know, how can you say you don't want to deal with him? Who knows what he's offering? Right, it, it's possible that, you know, it, in the process of the, um, the appeal, the appeal process we talked about, list or BCA to state appraiser, um, Costello usually makes it pretty clear what, what he expects and what he'd like, and um, in a monetary way. And it's possible that in a settlement he would approach the table and say, I'm willing to you know, I'm willing to agree to something that's more than what I had in my proposal or, or my appeal. So it's possible for sure. And in the Lister's perspective, it's not, it's the, the precedent issue outweighs the monetary points on these particular parcels. The only time when, well, the monetary gain, if the monetary gain was great, right. it would, it, it would be the president to sit down and have a settlement. Right, monetary right, gain I can see that, is, 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 I mean, I mean, not that... So without knowing, without knowing what he's offering, then in, in effect we don't, right. you know, we don't have anything to base that. Right, right. well the memorandum that, that, that he said to Anita that I read um, was the same information. I mean, in that memorandum that I read was the same information he's brought to the listers and then again to the BCA. So. I don't, I mean, if there is new information, it wasn't in there. Right. And, I, and you know, it, like you said, it, it falls, the, the settlement agreement, arrangement really, is, it's the select board's prerogative. But uh, the Lister board pretty strongly recommends um, to just, you know, to let the process thank, thanks but no thanks and then go through the process. Yeah. And, and we'd be happy to represent the listers in, at the table, but it's, it's your decision. And so you could, you could hear him and then walk away, but we'd recommend not even hearing and not even engaging. Because we've had this back and forth, we know that this is a cycle. We really want to... Yeah, yeah we problem. don't want to bring this as a, yeah. as a play in the table. And but this, it's your call. The handbook, in case you guys want some reading. Did you say though that it, it goes to the state appraiser that that usually it will wins go out? To the state appraiser. But well, historically, it, for for the parcels related to to Greg Wilson, mm -hmm. um, and the, the decision has been in favor of the appellant. So it's what they've wanted. It is. It but is. But that doesn't necessarily mean you know every single case is is seen differently. Right. But. This issue of cost approach in mass appraisal versus fair market value, which is a much more, you know, it's what a professional appraisers do, and there's formulas and things, and you know, there are things, that, tools we don't have access to, oh. and that's acknowledged. And Norm Wright knows that, and he acknowledges it. Says, you know, your the system doesn't work for you. That that's not just our town; it's everyone. But it's it's our system. <laughs> like it's, we we it's stand also, by our numbers because it's our system when it gets to the state level. And this is, you know, that pattern is not just unique to Putney. I think it's, mm -hmm. if you ask other listers office, the ones that go to the appeal, you know, to the, the state appraiser, or the state appraiser? State hearing officer. State hearing officer. Um, typically that, that is what happens, except in, it, with exceptional cases where the town's rock solid on fair market value. Now the other thing, the other piece of this, further down the rabbit hole we go, is we're doing the reappraisal, townwide reappraisal. So our fair market values, our numbers are going to be stellar come next year. What they're appealing is the 2013 grand list year, I believe. You know, it's, it's last year's values. Ordinarily, when you go to an appeal at this level, they take that year that you're appealing and two more years that no change is made in the values unless you change the land or the property in some way. But if you keep the property, then the value stays rock solid for that year unless and two more. Unless you have a town-wide reappraisal, which we're having now. So the piece that's really on the table is one year's values for those three appeals. Because this year's grand list, 
it kind of wipes the slate clean. Right, it'll be a whole new so game. It starts, yeah. it starts back square one. Right, it and starts he, at one yep. again. And there's a, a, a very good So we could probably assume that we'll be looking again. at an appeal. Well, or even the, if we are. these properties just given the, 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 the pattern and the nature of it. Yeah, yeah that's where we're okay. raising ourselves. Yeah, but even if we are for the, um, for the reappraisal year, we do have the firm that we've hired to help right. us with the reappraisal with the grievances they would go right up through BCA. All the way through. So if there is, so if it does go further, see the, see the idea of meeting and doing a settlement is more what it'll be like a few years down the road if we set the precedent of doing it. Right. So that's really it. I mean this other stuff further down the rabbit hole is just to let you know that it's, the appeal is for one year really, not three, which it would be traditional. Mm -hmm. So, any questions? Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I guess the question is, do we have to accept this meeting? I mean, are we bound no. by anything no. to do so? No, okay. that's what the All right, so there's, the it's not there's a matter no of statute by the to do it. To we can be fairly sure, I mean, I, I mean we're making, we are making an assumption, but the the process will be appealed again in the new with the reappraisal. Is no. would it would would we be interested in accepting some written information from the lawyer regarding you know essentially whatever they're offering the position wise would that be helpful in not in our you know case. in other words deliberating without having to go through a formal deliberation I would I would imagine Todd Costello would be re be, be reluctant to I think that Again, I think he would say mm -hmm. let's just come to the table and talk you know that's kind of more his style mm -hmm. and we also have all of the documentation from the prior appeals that that other than a a, a dollar figure that's what he'd be bringing all right okay Oh and then the, the, well, the other confusing part about this is that he's talking about settling three different right three different appeals, and, and, and that's another thing that's been that problematic happened. with us because right. it is really confusing. It's right. like you know, it's a puzzle out there, and everybody yeah. Well, you guys were on the ICA when yeah. we brought right. it. Right. Mm -hmm. Recall that this was a little and bit and and I do think a state hearing officer is the one to piece this out really because it is complex. It's not. It's not one appeal, and it's not one simple thing, because it hinges on things that have happened before. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I was I was surprised that that there is a step like this that's you know, part of the process. I mean, it would seem well, that it would need a little more far, formalization somehow, or you know, I can see if it went to a mediator or something like that. But no, actually, the, the first time this happened. It, it, it totally caught me off guard. Do you remember that? Kathleen, Kathleen, sort of grabbed me as I was walking through the building and said, you know, something really weird just happened. Tom yeah. Costello pulled me into the other room and said, hey, you want to make a settlement? I'm going to make a deal. And, exactly. And, and I, I, you know, both, yeah, both Kathleen and I were like, whoa, this is totally inappropriate. So we did the research then and found that it's totally appropriate. It is appropriate to, and, to and that Tom was well within his rights and, and you know, completely proper. It just was surprising mm -hmm. to me also that such an informal approach could right. be taken, but it's I, I what it is. I think it's so. most useful, this particular settlement piece, in larger parcels where the monetary value really is going to have effect on the bottom line grand list. And, you know, Chris Ryan, um, we, after the first appeal from Baskerville, when Baskerville did the first split off, um, that that appeal went through the whole process, and we took a pretty big hit. That yeah. was the first time we saw that. Yeah, yeah. that was the first time. It was one of those, in retrospect, oh, maybe we should have settled, you know. But since then, we haven't seen anything that would rise to, to that feeling, you know, from a monetary right. perspective. Mm. And the other piece that, that we haven't experienced is if you are going to incur legal, if the town is going to incur legal fees that are going to, add this, you know, just Ex rack up, then it's worth considering the settlement right. because the, but, but we've felt that um, they just haven't warranted having counsel, you know, at the state appraiser level, at the, the hearing officer level, and, and we would say that for this one as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just need to know whether you guys want me to respond with a no, we're not meeting, or yes, we're meeting on this date. <laughs> <laughs> and if you choose to meet, you don't have to accept it, but that, you know, that's... Yeah. 
you can't. Accept I mean, it. I just think we need to formalize some type of response to them, right. whether it's a yes or no. And, yeah. Right. And, um, yeah. I mean, my, the only question I had today when we were talking about it was does, and I have no idea if it's a question, does offering to meet, does that have any weight at the state level? I wondered that of, too. Yeah. Okay, well, they met and they're strongly the saying kind of no. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't know if that held any weight, you know, with all yep. these other things we've been through, trying to settle prior does hold weight. But I, I suspect in this case, maybe not. I mean, I think they have a very rigid process that the state hearing officer has to do. Yeah, well, that's why I put the um, page that I put in front of you guys so that you can see. Because it isn't really that the Secretary of State um, says don't do this, but they also don't encourage, encourage, it. encourage it in right. a big way because it undermines because the process. The, well, the secretary, you know, well, settlements may also this was encourage. From the secretary of State? No, this is from this handbook. But I spoke to the attorney at the Which meeting. is from the Secretary okay, of State's office. I, yeah, yeah. I and I guess my, my, another question is, would we have our attorney here on hand I would, at, if at you like were this, to would, agree to a meeting, I would definitely, I would strongly suggest having would, our attorney would, on meeting. I would too. So we're talking about an, you know, expenses here on this. When that's yeah, I would assume it would be under our attorney. I understand. Okay. Right. Yeah. But it's a you know, consideration that we would. Okay. So let's. Deal with that. It's your pleasure, <laughs> gents. I already yeah. said I'd go if I, you know, but. I mean, so, unless there is clearly new evidence, which it doesn't sound like there is, then I think the BCA did a pretty thorough job the first time around. And I mean, we looked at that pretty closely yep. and we didn't see we a did. lot of wiggle room in there. So, and we're going on, you know, recommendation of listers now. Yeah. And, and the we're, fact and that we're, we're anticipating it to be appealed. You know, I mean, I know that doesn't hold any water in this. No, that right. should that should be. It's not in that's, the contract. That's their yeah. right to right. do that. Exactly. So. And if you've already a decision to not meet with them shouldn't be contingent on the fact that they do right. all the time. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's you have the right to do that. You have, you can consider whether or not you really really want to go and, and kind of. Oh yeah, no. I mean, I just ex you know expressed my willingness of, right. of the three of us right. to, 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 to go. I mean, I, I, if I don't have to, <laughs> I would think I, I just I'm guessing that you know if we were willing to move a little bit, that's not going to be good enough. Right. So right. you know, unless we're willing to so go in and get pretty number, darn close right. to what they were asking right. for the first time, it's probably. Mm -hmm sort of a moot point, but, you know, that's a guess. Yeah. Well, even even any conjecture or guessing, it still begs to wonder, do you want to set the precedent? The precedent of, of, of like being that. willing that's to That's actually settle. the bigger yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. That's actually the bigger question. So uh, I guess my feeling would be no. That's, I guess, I'm, I'm of the same opinion. I'm thinking if you guys are really comfortable mm -hmm. with what you've done. Mm -hmm. Oh, very. Um, it, it kind of seems like the process going through the process is the way to go. Because yeah. uh, I guess the other thing I wonder, and I guess it's more abstract, is if we, does you know, does this end up making you doubt yourselves a little bit more next time you're, you know what I mean, doing, you know, does it ruin some objectivity if, if we with them or someone the else? Hypothetically, if we set right. the precedent as a town, and then somebody grieves to the listers formally, and then they grieve to the BCA formally, and then they're going to send it to the hearing officer. There's a precedent that they could. There's it's, it opens up an opportunity to even other landowners, right, to do which, to do this. And which, I understand what you guys are saying, but that opportunity is there anyway. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right. It is there, and it's there right. for a purpose. And I don't want to and, deny and we the don't fact want, that we might do this at some point in the future. Right. I mean, and, and I and think and that and it really is sure a case by case yeah. thing. You sure. know, because you yeah. don't want to say today that we're not going to set that precedent, and then three weeks from now find somebody that really they as it as does as fall as under as this. As yeah. You know, yeah. there could be a legitimate yeah. reason. So. My own personal feeling is, particularly with these parcels, and and particularly with these parties that are coming to the table. Um, you know, the precedent thing, from our perspective, yes, it's there, and you know, we we like to see it not be set, but particularly with these people. You know, we we expect we expect to see them a lot. We've already seen them a lot. You know, and and we we appreciate that we we've, we've been losing, but we're happy with the process. You know, and that says something. Mm -hmm. yeah. I and I think that Tom really is saying, oh, here's your opportunity. You know, do you want to make a deal? 
it's just not worth it for these. Let's wait for the deal. If you want to make a deal, do it. In our opinion, consider it if there's a bigger monetary value. Right, mm -hmm. right. If there's something really unique. Yeah. But this is not that, in our opinion. You may have already said this, but if it goes through the regular process, does the town incur expenses? Not, not unless we hire an attorney to sit with us at the hearing. Okay. The hearing officer comes, and it's a formal hearing. I mean, so, it's a normal lister, you know. Okay. Right, okay. but it's a formal table. hearing. He comes and he picks it up de novo. So he picks it up brand new. We represent, we the listers represent the town and the BCA's decision. Okay. Anybody can meet with us to also represent the BCA. I mean, anybody elected mm -hmm. can also... Me or it hasn't been typical that the t attorney has been okay. there, but there is a possibility if they feel that they need that. Mm -hmm. okay. And yes. to the extent yes. that the, the hearing officer um, judges in favor of the town, there is a chance that the appellant would take it to the next level, which, which would be is the Supreme Court or some uh, Supreme Court or something else. Supreme Court is the next. But what, that, that next step we've never Supreme done, Court. and we would have we would consult. Yeah, yeah. we're we're still rock solid on our data. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would be able to represent it if it ever did go to that. But I mean, it's unlikely that mm -hmm. it would go to the Supreme Court, right? right. I would suggest if you go to the Supreme yeah, Court. Yeah, no, we are. Well, yeah. of course. We'll take a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go with that one, but. <laughs> but the point is, is that our data is still defendable, regardless of who brought it to the Supreme Court. Right, right. right. That's okay, so I'm going to write something yeah. up that there's no meeting. Yeah, I'm Anita, anything okay. you want to add to that? Do you want to communicate? Well, I'll talk to you tomorrow about it. Well, she can talk now. No, I mean, no I'll talk to her tomorrow too. about who's going to communicate yeah. with her. Oh, 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 oh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do you think that's a mistake? No, no. <laughs> You're just, yeah. Yeah, I'm just. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. thank you. And thank you, young voter. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> we do have some openings in various that's positions. Yeah. <laughs> Fence viewer, maybe. That's right. <laughs> Don't take his How about, is there a fence Is there a fence sitter? Sitter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Waiter of coal, sorry. <laughs> fence sitters. So I wanted, oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, I need to take over. Well, you fire away. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to update you guys on two issues with the um, sewer system. The Putney Inn. Um, I thought maybe we were going to have to take action on this tonight because I thought I'd have dollar amounts to possibly approve, but the Putney Inn's pump station is non-functional right now. We're having the, the um, tanks pumped weekly because there's three users down there. The Putney Inn's not open, so that's not causing us a problem. Chris Hayes has been, it is like putting a puzzle together, all the different pieces that he has to kind of get together with, do we want to re- you know, refurbish one of the pumps, the cost of that, it, should we just go with a new? So there's all these pieces that he's putting together and he's coming to me as it's happening, kind of looking for approval, which is a difficult thing for me to do because it's not like one. I suppose putting it as a big it's package. It's like saying, this the is the full, RFP, this right. is what we're looking for for all, because they're kind of, they're doing a lot of work on their own. Yeah. Simon's operation, you right. know, they get apart. Right. They're in the process of possibly putting the um, old, the one pump online um, within the next couple of days and doing the test as soon as they get some um, electricity wired up um, to get, at least the pump so we can stop with the pumping of the um, tanks but it's this could end up being potentially when we're all done a twenty thousand dollar project so i just don't know the numbers right now right. so i just wanted to let you guys know that i'm in the process of that there may be some expenses that i say to him yeah go ahead and hire the electrician do some things right some things that have got to be that have got to get done that we can't wait for two anyway. weeks to He's really struggling finding electricians that have workers comp. <laughs> Better to. So yeah. we're finding the the prices are um, quite a bit higher Stumbling. with the ones that that yeah. do. But this is definitely a job that I mean Joe almost got electrocuted down there the other day. It was bad. So we are we're kind of working that old depot road is a different that's a smaller project maybe four thousand dollars but um, that's a pump that needs to be they have a different type of pump down there um, but Putney and really potentially could be a lot of money I ha I do have a claim into the insurance company because there was some damage with frost and they're just trying to go through the whole incident report to see if our insurance will cover any portion of it 
you know, because then the question is, will you only cover what was there, or will you allow us to upgrade, you know, so. Well, that's the question I have, I guess, is, um, I mean, I understand that part of it was because Putnam was closed, and yeah. so there wasn't the same usage, but, you know, that, that could potentially happen again. Yeah. So are we planning on, on an upgrade that will, you know, mitigate the long, that? Yeah, the, 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 possibility. the hope is, and what Chris and I both want is not to do anything with the old 1972 pump. Put eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars into it. It's you mm -hmm. know some of the components you are hard to find, and they're having a hard time even pricing out what the what the, what it would be. I mean, the best thing to do with while we're doing it is just to upgrade it to the newest mm -hmm. available product because the Putney Inn is supposed to open, and when they do, hopefully, it'll be a lot more business than what we've been used to pumping through that station. So. Right. Um, I mean, Chris is very aware of how, you know, tight I am on the budget. So he's really aware of that and he really under he really is right. mad about the workers comp thing with me. Him and I have had some battles about it, but, um, so I just wanted to let you guys know, I mean, I might bring an expense to you that might have already happened. I don't know what else to do. I'll keep in touch with Scott and um, kind of keep him in the loop of what we're spending. I mean, the bottom line is is that the sewer budget is going to take a big hit with this. We don't have a lot of money in that fund. And Laura and I, next at the end of next week, are starting that project of, of water and sewer. Actually, I think that was last week we said it. So the end of this week, right, Laura? But at the same time, <laughs> you can't ignore, the, you can't all can't the, ignore the potential of a customer as big as this when right. they are. And it's costing us $150 right, sure. a week just to pump those three mm -hmm. users out down So we duct tape it for now and... Yeah. I mean, hopefully some insurance gets, money will come get, through. When it gets closer, we yeah. bite the bullet and spend the money. Okay, so I'll bring it back to you and let you know what's going on with that. Keep track of the expenses. And, but there's not... Chris is really... I mean, and then we have the whole other problem with this pipe. It goes across the bridge over 91. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we years. have to do some stuff right. up there... Then we're talking permitting process with the state and how do you get up there? And I mean, it's just, he has really been working hard to put it all together, but um, it's just not as easy as saying, okay, this is the project, what is the cost? And yeah, do we approve it? Yes right, or no? Find it's out just that not that easy. Two years from now, they, they want to tear up the entrance and well, the exit. And well, we've been, ta I've been talking them, closely sure with the state because coming, I said to him, when is this bridge going to be, you know, is it on a schedule to be fixed or replaced so we could kind of do it? That one's not on a schedule right now. So, mm. yeah. Okay, so that's kind of that. That means either tomorrow or never. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The good thing is, is that will be one asset. We really know what the cost was and how long the lifetime will be. <laughs> that's about the only good news I can get out of it. Sunny side, yeah. All right. <laughs> I try it with everything I do. Squeeze that out of it. Okay. okay, so with the uh, it is six fifteen. Well, the I think only we other should thing, talk we should probably just get part. through with the uh, town meeting. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot we got to do there. Do you want your si your signatures are all legitimate? I mean, you you have the right number of signatures. Yes. Okay. So, Anita already told you guys last week that she was anticipating that they were going to be receiving in the town clerk's office a petition to revote Article 17, which is the budget. Um, uh, there was, um, it was brought forth due to the rescue the ambulance service contract discussion. So they got enough signatures. Now we just need to pick a date. So that's kind of where we're at. We have to post it. it has to be posted for at least 30 days, but not more than 45. 40. 40. So we don't have a warning for you to approve tonight, so we don't have a date. But we were looking, when Anita and I talked about it today, we were looking maybe May. Well, I guess the first question is evening, day, or Saturday. Anita and I kind of prefer an evening. Yeah, I think an evening is. Yeah. Um, and giving the time frames of posting, if we wait until the next select board meeting to approve a warning, then it can't be until the last week of May, which we were thinking do maybe you have Thursday a, the 29th. Do you have a, you just need a date for the 
yeah. warning. So, I mean, do we need to meet to approve that, or can we give I think you sort can of come contingent, contingent approval? Contingent and then come in and sign it when it's ready. Yeah. Yeah. So either so we we looked at two dates today. Thursdays were the first one's the twenty second, or the 29th is the following Thursday. May. Two. Oh, I was going to say. So. This is a select board meeting. So this Thursday or this Thursday or whatever other day you guys want. So this allows us how much? It's 15 days warning. Is that what 30. it is? 30. Yeah. Right. And we have I to have it before have June 2nd. Because we have to be able to. It has to be done within 60 days of when oh, you get the petition. We're doing good. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing I thought about this week anything. is this is a. I mean, this this is a holiday. I don't know if that makes a difference to anybody. I don't know if anybody's going to be gone that week or. Um, Let's do it on the twenty second. Yeah. I, there we go. Um, I'm just sitting here, sitting here staring at the calendar. So, yeah. <laughs> What's time? Twenty second. What time? What time? Oh. Uh, we should make it thirty seven. Yeah, six later. Enough, maybe yeah, six thirty. I think. Where would it be? It's early would enough to it? get fire station. Probably. Where would we do it? At the school. Or it the, would be good at the fire station if we could move those tables. That are in there. Then you could get more chairs. And then have just have an assembly of chairs, you mean? Yeah. Does it make sense to do that or just do it at the school since all the chairs are there and everything? Well, we're gonna have to check with the fire station anyway. So we'll do it the twenty second. We will let you know if it's at Where the fire station or the school. Because okay. I don't know if the fire station will be available. Or right, the school. Or the school. Jeez, I hope <laughs> one of them is. Yeah. Because I don't think we're gonna pat people in here. <laughs> hmm? Um, and presumably, we, I mean, it's up to us to accept this petition or does this force the vote? I mean, I, I know we, I, do, do we need to um, approve the petition or accept the petition? Well, I don't know. If you are going to accept the petition and... And by the by calling the meeting, I, I guess we're okay. Fine. I'm just wondering what the we need a motion though to approve to acceptance. Accept the petition. Yes, I think so. Don't I we? Think so. Yeah, Wouldn't I think we so have too. To accept us, so? I think so. Yes. Okay. No, so, no, I don't think no, we do. No, we don't have oh. to. I think we no, do. it can be. Well, my well, reading in the statute that. about this was mm -hmm. that that it could be that it can be petitioned and the select board then. But mm -hmm. I could be wrong. But that was my understanding okay. of it. So, um, but I will make an emotion, a motion that we um, accept the petition uh, presented to the select board to call a special meeting to be held on um, May 22nd to reconsider um, Article 17 from town meeting. I'll second that. Yeah. Right. Any further discussion? Uh, just one question. This these uh, this is the full list. Here? No. no, no, no. I only copied it so you could see what the actual mm -hmm. wording of the. Article so how many was. were on the petition? Uh, 80, 85. Oh wow! So that's that's, a, it's that's the, the necessary number. Well, I was going to say if you remember at town meeting there was forty something on one side. So that's, right, it's a big number. That's significant. Yeah, for me to. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. All right. It's been moved and uh, second. Yes. This is not an Australian ballot. This is like from the floor at that meeting. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which? The 85 signatures. Is that, yes. I, I is that correct? Is that correct? Is that correct? Number. Over 85. Over 85. Yeah. Um. But I, I, my guess would be, Howard, that if we had a vote that was even sort of as close as it was in town meeting that we would probably do it as a, a paper as a paper, paper, paper. paper. not an a, not an australian but a paper ballot oh. at this special meeting and cynthia i'm sorry you already said it i don't want to assume you said because of rescue what not was? because of the ambulance contract somebody because of the way the vote came out at town meeting somebody put a petition together to Be do because it. golden cross was voted down correct well yes I, I didn't talk to the person that sent the petition in but I know that that was what the discussion was in town. It's to revote the budget. 
because of the ambulance discussion. And so the procedure is the same budget is is presented and it's either voted up or down. If it's right. voted down, then you guys got to go with another budget. I mean, it would be it, Article 17, Howard, you can get a copy of if you don't have, to see the, if the town will vote to raise an appropriate. I mean, it's just the standard bud, budget, but then the it was voted to add the additional right. 22000 to it. So it was amended. So it, exactly. It was amended at town meeting. So it's to reconsider that amended vote amended budget that was approved at town meeting okay just as an aside excuse my ignorance but what is the difference between an australian ballot and a paper ballot that's going in the voting booth yeah and it would the polls would oh, be okay, open so all day oh okay so this is just and and at a at a paper ballot for out on the floor, mm -hmm. it would be people are given yes or no. a, a yes or exactly okay. a yes or no, and then they're counted as mm -hmm. there. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. And any other discussion? About this? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so May 22nd at 6.30, 6:30. and I will find out if it's fire station or school. I don't know. Fire station's kind of small. We've got, we, we can, we can, yeah. unless we, we do it, in, in, unless we do it out in the truck okay. bag. Yeah. Okay. We're Just check. What's that? We're outside. Wouldn't that be nice? May 22nd, that could be <laughs> hit or miss. All right. Okay. Very good. A couple little things to get them off the thing, and then we can. Yes, by all right, means, please. Um, April 18th, we are having a training session at the fire station. It's the emergency management and ICS training. We have to do it as part of the, the, the local emergency operation plan. Laura, myself, Anita, we're going to it. Tom put it together, but he suggested that any select board members that wanted to go, it is from. Hmm. It starts at 10. He didn't tell me how 10 to what. He just told me to furnish donuts in there. That was in there. <laughs> um, furnish he said furnished I'll donuts? Three, what? Three I'll to be four there. hours, I'll he say, said. Yeah, I was going to say it. And it starts at 10. On April 18th? April 18th. Friday? Yep. I'm out of town, so okay. I will not be there. I, I, I might... Okay. Yeah, I know it's. I'll have to. I mean, we don't. You don't have to sign up or anything. Okay. Just show yeah. up because yeah. we, the three of us, are going anyways. Mm -hmm. And um, we have had a request to have email select board emails on our website. Do you guys have any reason why you would not want your email on the website? Okay. Uh, d d can we put a little asterisk? Do not expect a response <laughs> or something. <laughs> sure. Okay. So we'll do that. Um. Then the only other thing I have before we let everybody else is the sidewalk. Um, we had a meeting last week about this next phase. And one of the things that I would like RSG to continue doing, because we have to go out with a um, RFP for that second phase for design. But one thing that I would like them to be able to complete is the um, environmental review and the 25% plans so that that can get done. That takes quite a while. That's one of the things that we had them do in this last phase. We paid for it ourselves. That's why we didn't have to go out to bid for it. Right. It was $3,000. He gave us another quote of 3000 for this second phase. Landmark is willing to pay half of that again. So I guess I'm requesting that the board pay half of this so that I can get them going on that, that project. If we don't, then the RFP for the second design has to include that in it. I mean, that goes into our match anyway, right? Um, no, this doesn't. How does that not count as match? Because I don't think they're going to let it be part of our match if we don't go out to bid. They're going to say Even if for you a small number like that? I, I'll check, but yeah, I, I'll check. I mean, that wouldn't stop me from... Agreeing to it, I just would assume yeah. it could be part of our match, but uh, I'll ask. For some reason, I was under the assumption not. That it's but not. So if if you guys are okay with that 
agreement, then I am going to get an RFP ready for that second design, second part of the design phase, um, so that we can get that firm hired to get the project moving again. So I don't. I, don't this was not on the agenda. On that. No. To spend money. To, no. Fifteen hundred? You want to? Well, no, I can do it. I can spend that much if I want to. I <laughs> right. just wanted permission. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So take, it just, okay take it out of the penny jar. Yeah. Um, Related to grant money and so on. You never know what the loops are. Okay. I mean, there's there's reports in there for you guys to look at, but that's something you need to go over right now. Some delinquent report. So I'm done. Talking. Okay. All right. Well, we have the Rescue Inc. board members, I, I'm assuming. If you would, why don't we uh, go around and introduce yourself. I'm Scott Henry, currently the chair of the board. Suck board. Josh Lachlan. That's Steve Head. Cynthia Stoddard. Oh, Laura. Yeah. I'm Doug Riley, uh, Rescue Board Member at large currently. I live in Chesterfield, New Hampshire. Uh, Lou Tyke, I'm a volunteer and member of Rescue. Drew Hilton, Chief Operations. Kathy Aiken, Chair of the Board. Harold Knowles, Secretary, Board. Dr. Chapman, Town Rep of Brattleboro, the Board. Wayne Clark, Lou Fain, Rep. Right. Um, I guess the question of this is uh, we've got some contract questions. I think that we would like to go into an executive session with board members from Rescue and uh, ask everybody else to park here for a few moments. Do we? And, I, and are we likely to take action after that? No, we will not be taking any action. Okay. It's to discuss uh, contract issues. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we go into executive session at. Uh, 625. Second. Yep. Oh, in favor? Aye. Aye. No, we're done. Yeah, so we're still in a meeting. We can't just chit chat. <laughs> oh, right. So we, I mean, we <laughs> had an executive discussion with the Board of Rescue Inc. Um, no, yep. no conclusions were. No actions to be taken. No actions were taken. Will be taken. But because like now that thank, she's still like here, we'd like to thank the Rescue Board things. again for their participation. participation here. Yeah. And since we're still, I'll go over these last two things and then we'll be done. Okay. The delinquent, I wanted to tell you guys where we are with delinquent taxes. Mm -hmm. um, there is a sheet in there. Last year, we had $216,000 go delinquent. <laughs> this year, we have 283000 which is an increase of 30%, which is not great. Um, we sent out notice the first notice of tax sale to 13 properties that means 13 of them have more than two years or more delinquent um, some of those taxpayers had made agreements with me last year and they did not follow through with those agreements so they cannot make another one they have to pay or they're going to tax sale um, they have till may 1st i'm going to give the list to the attorney the first week in june and then august will be tax sales we have collected quite a few of that since um, February, 102,000 of what went delinquent, so we're on the right track. 102 of the 283? Yep. So that number kind of scared me, though, when we had 66,000 more delinquent this year than last year. That's yeah, a big number. And, and that's just mm -hmm. indicative of the economy Couple, kind of thing? One of them was a big account. A cable, it was either cable or something, so that was that, yeah. and they paid like the next day or something. They just paid, yeah, just paid. so, it was just a, so yeah, that, which, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I did, I remember at least a number of years ago, uh, you know, you'd see it up in the general store, they, they'd actually list, oh, they're listed, yeah, yeah. I mean, publicly. Do they well, they're in the they're in uh, the, the tax sale. You get a, no, 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 no. The um, you get a capital D and sew it on your shirt. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the, the list of delinquents. <laughs> yeah. Did we take it at the general store? Really? <laughs> I, I, I think. I, that sounds. 
possible. That yeah. sounds possible. Yeah. yeah. It's right for the shooting of the dog. Well, it's so far, probably <laughs> somewhere between the haircuts and the. Uh, really? Uh, uh, that's interesting. I mean, we put it in the town report. But it's in the town report. But we can okay. no longer okay. put amounts in there. We can only put names. Legal. Oh, is that right? Yeah, by law, you can't put amounts. Oh, okay. Huh. When can, did that change? Uh, last year, two years yeah. ago, maybe? Oh. Re- you recently. Never said. Oh, so, it is recent. Because, yeah. You know. But it's public. That information is public oh, record. Sure. We just can't put it in the town report. Yeah, that... it has something to do. We even have to be careful about the list that we give out. Something to do with the state rebates and people can back in to right, find out. Right. I mean, that, that caused a lot of. That was that was the little green book that went out every yes, year. People with have so much time every, on their the valuation information. Right. right. So, oh, that house is worth that into values so they can find out income. Can you imagine spending right. your time on that? Um, but it was a court case that, that went through Supreme Court or whatever. So I think that's all I have. I guess. Court. Court. Oh, yeah. right over here. And did we? Uh, we signed those other liquor licenses, right? Yeah, they came by and left by. Um, while you're signing those, the warrants, we, we didn't get them the most current one done for this week, but on the warrant for this week, there is going to be a check for Travis for the roof. He, for how much? Half of it. So it was half up front and then half. So would it be okay with you guys? It'll be half of 51000 So would it be okay with you guys once that check's done, if I can give it to him, it'll be on the next warrant? Do you guys have any... I have yeah. no it was kind of a timing. He started it, and I told him he would get paid on the 8th or 9th when we had the meeting, but it just didn't get done. Um, we didn't get the work done. Flying right along. Stuff down there. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like yesterday. Yeah. Anybody? I should probably stop by and go look at the nailing too. <laughs> just to be sure. I'm confident. I but said, I said, right, you got a lift to get me up there and I'll yeah. come, come up and take a look? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have one spindly ladder up onto the road. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll let him, as soon as that checks done, I'll let him watch that. It'll be on the next warrant. And I think, I don't even know where the agenda went. Is there anything else on there? Um, I don't think so. Oh, I did the, just to make a note, the drug and alcohol policy I gave you guys last time, Laura mm-hmm. and I are going to a training on Friday mm-hmm. for the whole drug and alcohol enforcement and what our requirements are, and I figured probably before we looked over that policy I should go to that to see if I learn anything new. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some sections in there that we have to, they gave us some guidance, yeah. and I didn't know what the heck they were even talking about. Well, like a non-negative testing. I don't know. I was totally yeah. confused. So I was hoping to maybe get some of that answered at my training. Mm-hmm. Did you have questions? That you well, to I mean, I guess, I mean, I, and uh, it's not anything we have to go over now. You had a couple little ones. Uh, but um, I mean, there's one thing that popped out at me, you know, if, and uh, if they decide to have that splits specimen tested, you know, yeah. the second one, yeah. they have to pay for it. You yeah. know, but it never mentions that they could, if they're exonerated, that they're reimbursed. It seems kind of weird to me. You know, it's, it's not like they have to pay for it. And let's say that that shows. Is that, because, is, there, is that because they get a negative test first, then they would ask for the other one no, to be done? Is they that get a that positive. They get a positive. I mean, a positive. positive. Yeah. yeah. So they. Yeah, they, they, they hang on. They're negative. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did too. Yeah. Okay. But it just seemed kind of odd that you know you you, you positive and you, maybe I go no, there's no way because they go right. to a different lab. Yeah. Right. And then so you send it to a different lab. You have to pay for it all. And say it comes back. Huh, negative. That's a good question. And yeah. unless I'm missing something, but as I look at this, I go, "Wow, I would be pretty ticked off." If they, yeah, you know, if I had to pay for your own pay for defense, my own defense right. in it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll find that out. Well, it could have been the first time's fault, but that was yeah. on page five. Okay. And read it yourself, but maybe I'm missing. I, you know, this. Is like it's such good. good it's such it's good impressive. reading that you know. I sat down with it and I thought, oh, good lord. This is, you know, I mean, part, I went to sleep this. <laughs> part of it for me was like, what asleep. has changed from what we had before? I, you know, it was like trying to compare the two, and then I'm like, forget it. I'll just. Definitely not that much. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there are 
changes, but it's probably not. Yeah, it was all that mm -hmm. stuff in yellow that I really I was frustrated with. That. So yeah. I will. We're going to go to that training. I'm glad you did because I, I I was feeling like an idiot <clears throat> trying to. Yeah. You know, what's it doing? It didn't Laura seem heard right. five times. Laura. Never heard to ask the question. What, Cynthia? What, Cynthia? <laughs> <laughs> I know she's yeah, rolling her eyes at me. <laughs> but that I pushed that down to old business because it, it, I'll wait. So I forget. And then a really stupid question: What is passive? P A C I F. That is the Vermont leagues of cities and towns um, insurance oh, liability. That's, that's what they call it. I don't know what it actually stands okay, for, okay. but yeah. I'm there. But they administer our drug and alcohol policy. Okay. Participation, yeah. all costs. Uh, well, I can't guarantee I'll ever finish this. <laughs> what was interesting in there, though, there was all sorts of stuff about the employee assistance program that we have to, in this model policy, that anytime this happens, we have to at least offer the employee assistance program to our employees. Well, we just approved being back in it. And I thought, well, if we hadn't done that, that, then you might not be able yeah, to. Yeah, so I don't, yeah, it was, I'm glad we approved it, but I didn't know that that's our policy. Okay, I'll move that we adjourn. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. aye, aye, aye. aye.